You're listening to the Mind Flipping Podcast, where you'll find tools and tips to help you renovate and update your mind and life. Sarah, thanks so much for being on the Mind Flipping Podcast. Thank you so much for having me here. I'm so excited to talk to you and, and to your listeners. Excellent. Well, I am excited too. Listeners, long-time listeners know that we cover a broad range of renovating and repairing and updating our mind, our body, our lives. And, and in the 80 plus episodes, we've had a, a broad range of health coaches like yourself. And we've had uh, mindfulness experts and uh, we've had mental toughness coaches and hypnotists and NLP experts. And, and you are a few of those, including being a health coach and somebody who's had her own mind flips, right? Right, exactly. Yep. <laughs> so uh, I'd love to hear kind of your mind flips and how you got into the health coaching field and, and uh, what your passion is today. Well, to take you back uh, to the, the beginning, I was a very goal-oriented type A personality that got myself into Stanford. I was uh, on at the national level in rowing crew and volleyball. Um, a fun little fact is I played volleyball with Misty May for three years. She was on, on my team. Now, I've heard the name. Is she a professional volleyball player? She is the professional volleyball player who okay. I think she won three Olympics. I know she was beach volleyball. She was on but your I, team. Yeah, she was a year younger. So I was an average player on a very good team. I'm sure you were her mentor and taught her all that she knows. <laughs> well, you know, I, I was I was more like a big sister. There you go. So, yeah. Um, so anyways, you know, back then you looked at me and, you, and I was just all about goal oriented, um, get the A's, get the, the results. And that was me. And and uh, my faith was always strong. But my my health started um, not doing so well just digestive issues, hormonal issues, acne, hair issues, um, had a few babies. And as you know, pregnancy takes it really out of a, a female. So my, my health really hit a rock bottom after my third pregnancy. And I went to Western medicine and they put tubes down me, up me, around me and came back and said, oh, you've got IBS. And I said, well, no, I'm not going to I'm not going to take that as my diagnosis. So I was forced into searching alternative um, therapies and medicines. And I was hooked up to what's called a SCIO machine. And that, that uh, scans your body for 10,000 items uh, from your minerals and vitamins to actually goes into um, trauma, can tell you if you've had a, tra had a traumatic experience when you're 16 years old or if you have daddy issues or um, will tell you where your hormones are and how your, your stomach and your spleen and your liver and your kidneys are all working. So it really tells you everything. So what's this machine called? SCIO, S-C-I-O. And it's a phenomenal machine. Very. Um, how does it scan? It's you put a, a band around your head and you have wristbands and ankle bands and it's through frequency that it just di it diagnoses you. Hmm. So with that, it was like peeling an onion. Um, first, we went after my digestive issues and I was told I have to cut out gluten and some of the other um, foods that most people nowadays are cutting out. And to get my hormones back on track, I started taking some herbal supplements and, you know, stepping back a little bit on my um, workouts and just changing lifestyle slowly. And then as we went along, I was introduced to what's called accelerated silver, which is just kills all viruses, bacteria, fungus, parasites in your body. And, and I used it you know, once in a while, didn't really understand the power of it. Fast forward to when my son, who's now 16, was nine years old. And he just, he looked pale. He looked, his color wasn't good. His grades went from being one of the top in the school to not doing well, not wanting to go to school. And I knew something was wrong. So we hooked him up to the machine and leukemia came up. 
And uh, of course, he's looking at me like, Mom, I know you're going to fix me. And it was the hardest day of my entire life because at that time, I thought I was doing everything I could as a mom. I thought I was feeding him well. You know, I didn't know what more I could do for him. So I started giving him the accelerated silver and we would check back on him and his health. And over the year, long story short, um, his blood, not only the cancer cells were gone, but also his anemia that was there was gone, his uh, nutritional deficiencies, his blood was nice and oxygenate, oxygenated and it looked great. So I sat there going, oh my gosh, I've got something here that I've got to share with the world. And it's, it's, not, just, it's not just something little. So I started sharing it with friends and family and got more into natural health, cleaned my diet up more, starting to become more mindful about what I was doing and how I was doing it. And that was kind of my aha moment, like, okay, the worst time in your life, the biggest challenges in your life are what brings you the most joy and teaches you where you are supposed to go. So here I was, a girl that thought I was going to graduate from Stanford, go be in the, in the financial business somehow, and do well, get married, have kids, and life is just going to go along the way it's supposed to go along and with no road bumps. And it makes me want to cry. But the, the biggest impactful thing that happened to me was the threat of life to my son. And um, with that, it's changed my course. I am able to now help so many people um, whether it's through supplements or just uh, dietary um, advice or um, teaching them how to be more mindful about their life, their lifestyle choices, reducing stress, um, you name it. I, I help people and, and use all these tools because as you know, it's not just one magic pill. And I I love seeing those people nowadays, and I've got a father who's one of them still, surprisingly, who just wants the magic pill. He's not going to change anything. This is your dad? Yes. Of course. I keep telling him, I said, yeah, well, you just, you just keep waiting for that, that magic. That magic pill is going to be created after you're dead. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so that was one of the biggest turning points in my life. And then the other, which was, it's so amazing how these things happen is um, I, I met this girl who was just a friend of a friend who wanted to buy a bottle of silver for me. And she did and never really heard from her again, but she, she was in a Starbucks that next day in line, a very long line. And the guy behind her mentioned that he had lung cancer and she turns around and goes, Oh, you need to call Sarah. And here she is. She doesn't even really know me. And he calls me and he gets on my program um, and I, I walk him through it. He had stage four lung cancer and uh, he did go through radiation. He did go through chemo. But with all of that, the doctors gave him a 30% chance to live. Within two months, the cancer was gone. Not only was it gone, within four months, there was no sign that there was a tumor even there. Wow. And he is, um, to this day, one of my biggest supporters. And uh, it just, it, it's one of those stories that keeps me going on days that I don't want to, I just want to, you know, relax and, and uh, take a back seat. So that's awesome. So things have just progressed. And, and with my kids, they each one, each one of them has a story to themselves. And I truly believe God gave me um, five people in our family with very different health issues so oh. that I was forced to come up with solutions. And, uh, you know, the synchronicities of what happens with one person in my family and then clients that same week or month, um, it's unbelievable. So it's like you have your own university. God brought you your own university. Right. Right, there. <laughs> right. right. You need to learn more. Here we go. It's pretty cool. Yeah. So 
with the health coaching you do, how, tell me a little, little bit about that. How much of that is um, diagnosing uh, deficiency? How much of it is uh, um, teaching mindfulness, uh, holding accountability? You know, what in general, and I know every client's different. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about your health coaching program. So mostly um, when you look at somebody's big picture, they want to tell you just a, a piece of it and then you got to start digging a little more, but you have to dig in a way where it's not going to put them on a, on the defense. And um, you know, some people are an open book, but some people just say, Oh, well, I've just got a thyroid problem. Will you fix it? Well, how are you sleeping? What's your stress level? What's your relationship like with your husband? Um, you know, oh, you've got your mother-in-law living with you. Well, let's talk about the stress that that would, <laughs> would involve. Yeah. Um, and, and your adrenals are burned out. So, of course, your thyroid's going to be low. So, it's a whole big picture. And, and I always take a step back. And 90% of uh, my clients, the same supplements will help get them back on their feet again. And I, I create bundles that are, that are just easy packaging for someone to say, okay, this is what I need to do. And I'm going to start with this. This is going to make me feel better. And what I learned with me when I first went to the natural practitioner, he said, we're not even going to start working on your, your mind yet because your mind can't work without the physical nutrients to get you in a place where you have a foundation. So I try to get people in a good foundation with supplements and coach them along the way, but really don't push on the, the changing their lifestyle too quickly. I want to get them feeling good to the point where they said, okay, I can do this. Now what? Tell me what more I can do now. And because that was it for me, it was a long journey. It was not overnight that I'm like, oh, I get mindfulness. I understand manifestation. I understand how I can change my course. It wasn't like that. I just needed to put one foot in front of the other. And to do that, I needed the nutrients in my body because I hadn't, my body wasn't working. Yeah. And most people have insulin resistance, um, Hashimoto's or some sort of thyroid issue, so very low energy. Most people have adrenal burnout. And all of these things, it is really hard to dig yourself out of those holes without doing some sort of nutritional based supplementation, whether it's through food and organic food and cleaning out the junk to um, giving you a few supplements, um, which I, you know, like I said, I packaged to, to make it so it's easy. I don't want to overwhelm anybody. And that is another thing when I'm, when I first talk to somebody, I make sure I get a sense of, have they taken supplements before? Where is their diet? Because I'm not going to take someone who's eating McDonald's every day, throw 10 supplements at them and say, you need to become, um, eat, cut out all the carbs and the gluten and the dairy. You can't do that. I want to make it easy and doable for them so that they start feeling well and then they can take the next step. So and the, the more that they are able to clean things out with their diet and add in the good nutrients, the more the brain fog goes away. So factually, if your brain fog's going away, you're thinking clearer. If you're thinking clearer, you have a better chance of getting connected to your higher self. If you're better connected to your higher self, then you are connecting to those around you that are on a higher frequency, which is just then additive to your the the ball keeps rolling in the right direction. Yeah. I I always say you're either on the hamster wheel going forward or backwards. So it's it's got to um everything's going to build on each other either in a positive or a negative way. That makes sense. And so it sounds like you try to meet them where they're at, make make sure they're not too far off the path and if they are right. they've got to come back on the path and then you'll meet them get them feeling better and then you can take them to the next level. Yeah. So for, for instance, I have this one um, client who's struggling with an eating disorder and 
her family and friends have, have given up on her completely. And she, she's, she said, gosh, Sarah, I, <laughs> I eat 20 apples a day. And I said, okay, well, we're going to, we're going to slow, we're going to get rid of those apples. And she says, you mean I have to throw them away? And I said, well, you have horses, right? Horses like apples. I said, no, it's not wasteful. I said, but let's, we'll cut it down. And so we cut it down and she's doing awesome. And she's eating what I recommend her to eat and she's feeling better and she's still getting, you know, the naysayers around her. And I said, you focus on yourself. Don't listen to them yet. Just focus on yourself. Well, this has been, I've been helping her for three weeks now. And last week she sent me this text, a frightful text saying, Sarah, I can't believe it. I, I went off track and I'm not doing well. And I, and I bent or whatever it was. And I said, I'm so happy you did that. And she said, what are you talking about? I said, you are not going to be perfect. And every time you go off track like this, you are reminding yourself of why you don't want to go back there. And you can, I want you to really take note of how you feel. How does your body feel after you did that? How does your mind feel? How is it to, um, how is your reaction to the world around you? Are you able to be productive? Are you, you know, I want, this is good. This is good news. And I, I really have changed my view on um, any challenge for me or a client that this is, this is a lesson learned. What, is, what are we supposed to learn with this lesson? And, you know, with what happened with my son Jackson. So I haven't even told you about his last year's issue. Oh, okay. <laughs> so here we are trucking along and he's doing great. And he's an, he is an extreme athlete. The rowing team, they work out three to four hours a day. But then that's just for the regular rower. Then you take my son's personality and you times it by 10 because he just his mind and his endurance is much bigger than his little body. So he's working out really hard. And we put him up on the skio machine and his heart starts showing AFib. And I thought, oh my gosh, this kid has an amazing endurance ability. How can he have any heart issues? Well, unbeknownst to me, he was using salt as a supplement, which is good for athletes. You need salt. But he was taking it to an extreme. And he was not um, hydrating himself to match that. So we went through a whole summer thinking that he needed to be on a no-salt diet. And his numbers were not improving. So he, and he looked at me when we first had this um, situation where we had to cut out all this, the salt. And, and he said, he looked at me and he goes, Mom, well, this is not going to be fun, but we've done this before together. <laughs> so you want to cry. Yeah. And I said, you're right. And we've done this before. And he goes, we're going to get through this. And it was like... He was the adult in the situation. <laughs> and um, so from that, here we are a year later, literally exactly a year, and his health is amazing. The kid can cook breakfast, lunch, and dinner for himself, for his friends, gourmet food, because he's been forced to learn how to cook. He, can't, he couldn't go out and have uh, deli meat or... Um, food at restaurants. I don't know if you've ever looked at the sodium on, on restaurant food. It's a, you, you just can't eat out at a restaurant, even if you eat clean food. So he was forced to truly learn the, how to nutritiously um, cook all of his meals. And um, he has now been a great example to his teammates. His teammates are like, huh, what are you doing? How are you doing that? And, and it's been a great lesson. Wow. So with every, with every downturn, there's always been a silver lining and, and something that we've learned. I love it. With every challenge, there's growth. There's growth. And so you mentioned, uh, I, I know, you know, before we clicked record that you and I are, are advocates of, fans of um, more intentional uh, stress. And that's, uh, well, kind of stress intermittent fat intermittent fasting yes 
So um, for listeners that aren't real familiar with it or for like if you were going to introduce it, the option to a client of yours, how would mm-hmm. you describe it and um, why should somebody consider incorporating it in their life? I love this question. So most of America, eat, we've all been told we need to eat six small meals a day and we need our carbs for energy and low saturated fat. Well, the reality is that's not the way our ancestors lived. And in every religion, I don't care what, what religion you are, um, it is fasting is a part of the religion and for a reason. So if you think about it, our ancestors didn't know if they were going to eat today or in three days. So the body needed to function in a way where it could go out on that third day and have strength and not feel weak to go catch that animal to eat. So what what most people feel is, oh my gosh, if I don't eat in two hours, I'm going to have a headache and be hangry. Not just hungry, but angry, and you better watch out. Well, the reason is, is the body's got two fuel systems. You're either a sugar burner or a fat burner. When you're a sugar burner, your body only has a certain amount of calories of sugar that it's stored in its liver and its muscles. And say you even stored some of that sugar in your quadricep muscles, but your brain needs those calories. Your your quads are not going to give those calories up for your brain. So the body constantly needs fuel. So the alternative is to get into a state of ketosis, which means that you're fat burning. So even like my son, for instance, who is, you know, less than 6% body fat, he's got thousands and thousands of calories of fat on his body to use for energy. And you can grab that at any point, any time, and your brain loves and prefers ketones for fuel. So what happens is when your body is in ketosis and it, and it is eating more of a higher fat, low carb diet, it, it looks for those fat calories for energy. So say you have your meal, it's full of fat, great. You burn that off, but then you need, you aren't eating for a while. Your, your body switches right into burning the fat on your body. It's very efficient and it also stabilizes your insulin resistance. Um, 80% of the, the United States is either diabetic or pre-diabetic. It's hands down. It's the worst thing that is going on right now. And, and people don't understand why it's a big number. It is a big number. So to, to get out of that quickly, you go in on a ketogenic diet and you will lower your insulin resistance and become much more stable. But not only that, you're going to have mental clarity more physical and mental energy, and you're going to be able to go for hours and hours without eating. So for instance, right now it's one o'clock. I haven't eaten today. I'm fasting because I think better. My clarity is so much more um, prevalent when I'm fasting and in ketosis. Now, if someone comes to me and they're a client and they're type two diabetic, for instance, And they say, well, there's no way I can fast. And I said, I would say, you're right. You can't go straight from being type 2 diabetic, needing to eat every couple hours, to fasting. What you do need to do is adapt your body to a ketogenic diet first. And that's what I help people do. I have a keto shake and some supplements that puts you into ketosis within 30 minutes. So then once you're in ketosis, it's like, oh, I feel great. Now I can do this. And I've had people say, well, you're telling me that I'm not going to have my snack at 10 a.m. and my lunch at noon and my snack at 3. And then a week later, they said, this is really strange. It's 2 p.m. I haven't eaten yet. What's going on? Why is my body freaking out? Sarah, should I be eating? And they, they get nervous that they should have a meal because they're just, they had meals six day, six times a day for so long. It was a neurological habit. Exactly. And so it's this, it's the habit thing. And and you've got to train your brain and your body to both switch out of that, that, that old habit. So now, um, with that, as they become ketogenic, then they're able to go for longer periods of time without eating. 
And then when they, as they go for longer periods of time without eating, they start to do what's called intermittent fasting. So what that looks like is you have dinner, say, um, at five or six at night, you finish eating by seven, and you go from seven till maybe 11 or noon the next day without eating. So essentially you're skipping breakfast. You're sleeping through the night, which is fasting anyways. Uh -huh. And coffee, you know, coffee's fine, water's fine, no calorie um, type foods in the morning is fine. And depending on your goal, whether it's just to lose weight, people add fat to their coffee because what that does is it, it will help um, – help them feel fuller, but stabilize their insulin because fat won't raise their insulin levels. Um, and then, and then once they do eat, it's not a low calorie diet or regimen. You just eat more calories and the healthier calories for one or two meals that day. And your body actually speeds its metabolism up because if you think about it, when you're eating six meals a day, and you're eating a little carbs all day long, every time you eat those carbs, you're spiking your insulin. Insulin's job, its only job is to store fat. So you're telling your body constantly, all day long, to store fat, store fat, store fat, and I'm hungry again, and I'm hungry again, and I'm hungry again. Mm -hmm. Whereas when you are in ketosis and you're fasting, your body says, well, gosh, this is awesome. I've got thousands of calories of, of fat on my body to use. I don't need any calories to take in. I'm going to rev up my metabolism. I, there's no starvation here. I'm in a good spot. And athletes are now becoming aware of this where they're actually, their workouts are more productive. Their strength is increased during the, the, um, the fasting periods, because when you're fasting in ketosis, if you think back to our ancestors, those ancestors, their, their bodies are not going to break down their muscle during ketosis. They need that muscle to go chase their, their feed. Right. So as when you're in ketosis, you're, you're, pre, you're preventing muscle breakdown, you're burning fat, you're feeding your brain amazing, um, uh, ketone energy, which it prefers over the sugar in the in the brain, and I don't know if you know, but Alzheimer's is now known as type three diabetes. So what happens is the brain actually stops the cells in the brain actually stops um, accepting sugar molecules for energy, and so those cells start dying, and that is what Alzheimer's is and dementia. So once you start feeding those same cells ketones, those cells actually rejuvenate and come back to life, and you can actually reverse Alzheimer's and dementia with ketosis. So I hadn't heard that. It's pretty phenomenal. Um, another reason my father is not going to get that magic pill because he's not listening to anything we're talking about here. Right. Right. <laughs> so, um, but anyways, as you're as you are becoming more ketogenic through supplementation and diet, the mental clarity becomes more prominent. As you become more clear in the head, you are able to become more in tune with your higher self. You're be able, you, you literally are living on a higher frequency. And what I've noticed over the last two years is the people that I tracked are on a higher frequency. The people that I really get annoyed and irritable around, which is not so positive to say, but they're on a, they're functioning on a lower frequency. And what I've seen in my kids is the most phenomenal part of this is that as we talked about, kids are so open. They don't have the resistance that we have. And my son Jackson, because of all of his health issues, he has be, just become so open to all of this. And he's, all three of my kids are on a ketogenic diet. And they do take the supplements and nutrition stuff. We obviously, um, not as much as most um, adults would need to take, but uh, just basic stuff. But they've learned that when they eat 
poor food choices, they don't feel well. Their headaches, they can't think in school, they are feeling sluggish during their workouts, they're irritable, um, you know, just that sort of thing. But what's interesting is I will send them like podcasts on manifestation or um, creating your own reality. And they're taking this on to a higher level than I have. And I'm trying to keep up. Yeah. Um, I won't, I'll never forget my 12 year old who truly has a gift. She was, uh, we were watching one of the basketball games on TV. I don't know which one it was. And she goes, mom, look right now is when they're going to take over and win the game. And I go, well, there's no way they can win the game. Da, da, da. And she, and she literally called out and predicted what was just about to, to occur. And um, she was one who, uh, first, second grade, she was having anxiety over test taking for reading. And she wasn't doing very, she could read, but her comprehension wasn't good. Then she would do take a test and she would do poorly on it. And it was this vicious cycle of anxiety and comprehension and anxiety and comprehension. And we found ourselves in a deep hole. And I, as a mom, I couldn't understand it because my two other kids were great readers. And I, you know, my, my philosophy was you work hard, you become good at what you're trying to do. And it was not making sense for my daughter. Sure. And so we, she, I'll never forget the day she said, mom, I'm reading this over and over again. I'm putting the words together and they don't make sense. And I just started crying. I go, okay, we've got to figure this out. So we made some changes dietarily and um, just teach different teachers and tutors and just trying to work through it and, and really address the anxiety part too. Well, she tried, she went along and got better at reading and better at reading. Um, so that was first, second grade, slowly at grade level, fifth grade, now in sixth grade. At the beginning of the year, she was just a little bit above um, her, her grade level. So just right at the sixth grade level. And this year, she has worked so hard on manifesting. And she, once she learned that she knew how to do it, and she would talk about, well, I'm going to manifest an amazing day today. I'm going to go to volleyball practice, and this is what's going to happen. Or I'm going to go to school, and this is what's going to happen. She came home um, three weeks ago, and she said, Mom, you'll never, you'll never guess what I got on my reading score, which tests what their reading level is at. Yeah. And I said, did you get eighth grade? And she goes, nope. I said, seventh grade? She goes, no, higher than eighth grade. I said, what? She goes, I said, ninth grade. She goes, no. She said, I said, 10th. She goes 10.9. So she essentially is just below junior level in high school reading. And this is a girl that at the beginning of the year was just barely at sixth grade. Wow. And, and I truly believe, yes, it's the diet and the, the clarity that comes from eating the proper foods um, and the nutrition but there had to be some sort of to get over that anxiety, which so many kids are suffering from anxiety and depression nowadays. Um, it had, it was all within her and in, in manifesting and changing her reality. It sounds like once she believed in herself and her ability to manifest that it took off. Yeah. yeah. So back to the original question on the intermittent fasting. No, I don't have my kids intermittent fast, but they, it's the same. They are on the ketogenic diet, which then allows, you know, adults to, you, you don't want to, the people that don't want intermittent fast are pregnant women and kids who are yeah. still growing. Sure. But they can definitely be on a very healthy ketogenic diet. Well, I know, when I do it, and I've been doing it more and more, and mine is the uh, the skip breakfast. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'll do longer. Sometimes I'll go to five. I'll do the fast five, and I'll go a few days where I only eat for five hours. And but yeah, I I just feel better physically and mentally, and yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. I would have never believed it if I didn't try it. Well, if you think about it, the one of the biggest uh, benefits is it reduces inflammation. So it's reducing inflammation throughout your body and water retention, but it's reducing inflammation in your brain. 
So your brain is able to function much more efficiently as well. I love it. Oh, yeah. there it is. The sound of speckling. Yes, it's time for the speckle round. Woohoo! <laughs> Sarah, are you ready for the speckle round? I'm ready. All right. So we'll uh, get a couple of, at least a couple of speckle round questions in here. Let's see. The first one, is there a, uh, something that you don't believe now that you thought you always would? Um, yeah, that, the, that life is planned out and you can, this is a weird question because I, as I was so goal oriented all of my life, um, I've taken it a different twist on it. Yes, I can have my goals in life, but I'm really being led by my intuition and what happens that day or that week um, or the lessons that are being shown to me that I'm supposed to take and, and move forward with. So I can't, I'm not totally in control of mapping out um, what is supposed to happen. And I don't want to because I want to. I, I like the spontaneity of not knowing what is what where I'm going to go. So, uh, what you're saying is you are the type who, like on the river, you got the paddle. I'm getting there. It's all up to me. And now you're willing to trust the current. And and if you're if you go off course, that's okay. Exactly. And, and that it's not about the end game. It's about the journey. Uh, that is something I really learned to enjoy is just the journey and the challenges that are in front of me are good things there. It's like, okay, I'm going to do it. What, are, what am I supposed to learn from this? It's not a bad thing. Challenges are not a bad thing. I like it. So you mentioned that you were, and this comes up now, goal oriented. I'm going to set a goal type A driven um, and you had IBS do you as a health coach do you see that a lot of the really driven people have IBS fibro oh yes yeah yeah it's all stress related yeah uh, and those like that, don't, we, that don't take a break I think they're too hard on themselves and they don't take a break yep and that is um, what our bodies mind and and body physical body are not meant to run marathons. That's not what we were. We're supposed to sprint and rest, sprint and rest. And it's something that I've had, uh, I had to learn and I'm, you know, I have days where I, I don't listen to my own coaching. Sure. Um, and my kids will have to remind me, you know, I, I, if I become anxious or um, irritable around them, they're the first ones to remind me, Hey, and, and, you know, my relationship with my family and my husband is number one. So if that starts, you know, being um, sacrificed by me being stressed, then it's really a big red flag and, and stopping and, and taking note of that. Slowing but, down. Yep. And like we were talking about earlier, you know, you can take all the supplements in the world and eat all the organic food, but if you're stressed, stress kills, stress causes cancer. Um, I had a, my grandmother, she lived into her late nineties, never took a drug. She was, she didn't believe in it. Her religion didn't believe in medication at all. And she looked at me and she said, there's no cancer disease in my body because it can't survive with love. If you're full of love and your heart is pure, disease does not, um, exist. And she lived it. And I always go back to that thinking, you know, if we all just could relax and have pure hearts, then there would be so much less disease in this world. Amen. I like it. <laughs> all right. Another speckle round question. Is there a word or phrase of the day that you'd like to share? Oh, I'd say manifest. I mean, it's, it's on our group chat between my, my family um, for instance, this morning it was raining in California here and we don't know how to deal with rain. <laughs> <laughs> so one kid needs a ride to school. The other kid needs a ride to school, forgets their binder and we're turning around and the police are, you know, someone got in an accident and everything was just going haywire. And I sent a, a, a text saying, okay, everybody stop. Let's manifest a, a turnaround on this day. And honestly, it did. 
it just to everybody. Um, I'm getting little texts back from the kids and, and everything's going great. So it. it's, um, it's, it's just kind of our key keyword in what you want to create. So, yeah. So that word is thrown around a lot. So for you manifest just means what? It means create your reality, make, make what you want to happen, happen. Um, and really get in tune with your higher self in making that happen. Excellent. Thank you. All right. Another spec around question. Let's see here. How about, is there a common belief in your field that you disagree with? Um, one would be, you know, I, I promote the ketogenic diet. Uh, well, this is t two part. I promote the ketogenic diet because I feel like it works well for most people. But that does not mean it works for everybody. And right. I don't think, uh, uh, one, you know, vegans and vegetarians think that their way is the right way for, for most people. I, I shouldn't say everyone does, but... I think there's all these different diets out there and you really have to test on what works for you. And I've tried them all. I've been paleo. I've been vegan, vegetarian. I even tried the carnivore diet for a couple of days where you eat nothing but meat. And, you know, every single one of them, I had a reaction to either positive or negative where I learned about myself and you're not going to die by trying something for, for a week or a month. And, and be open to it. However, with the ketogenic diet, what really bothers me is you will see people saying, well, I'm keto and I go to McDonald's and just don't eat the bun. Or I'm a vegan and I'm having French fries because they're vegan. <laughs> and so I think there's a, I think the term is uh, dirty keto versus clean keto. I am, I am um, a proponent of clean eating regardless of what the diet is i i try to do organic as much as i can if i am eating meat it's hopefully grass-fed um and organic and um sustainable and wild fish um but if you're you know you can be you can eat a ton of junk food on a vegan diet you can eat a ton of junk food on a keto diet um pork rinds and and dirty, dirty food like that, it, that's not where I'm coming from. Because yeah. regardless of what diet you're on, if it's dirty food, it's going gonna, it's gonna to clog up your brain. And it's the, the oils, the dirty oils that are really bad for your cells and just cause disease. Yeah. And what's it going to do for your stomach, among other right, things? Exactly. You know? yeah. uh, so I know you, we've talked a lot about supplements and um, accelerated silver. Is that right? Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Um, and keto and, and bringing in good, clean food, but I don't know you, you also practice and share with your clients the power of mindfulness. Am I correct? Right. Mm -hmm. How do you, is there a, a quick lesson that you give your clients or your kids, um, to practice mindfulness? I try to, I, try to tell them number one morning routine is very important i think if you start your day out with the same routine it sets your mind in the right place whether it's just a quiet moment of meditation or stillness um, and then possibly working out or doing your your if you're if you're going to exercise i i believe morning time is the most beneficial because number one you're fasting so what's happening when you're fasting is that your body and your mind are both clear and not worried about digestion and that's a good time to also incorporate um envisioning what your day is going to be like and becoming more intentional with your time and mapping out your day i know that if i don't have that in the morning i feel like i'm behind the eight ball the rest of the day even if it's a slow day and I just feel shaken. I feel like I need to be somewhere and I don't know where I'm supposed to be. Sure. And um, being mindful and intentional about your food. So say you're, say you're going to have going to a birthday party tonight and you are going to have um, food that's not on your strict diet. That's okay. 
but be intentional about it. Sit down and really enjoy it. Enjoy what you're having instead of, and, and enjoy the company you're with. Um, be more intentional about the people you're around, that you're choosing to be around. And be more intentional about cutting the toxic people out of your life. Just by doing those few things, you will see a huge difference in the way your days go. Um, start writing down in your gratitude journal. Um, some things that I, I like to do is to actually write down in the morning what I'm grateful for that happened that day. So what I'm looking to that's all that hasn't happened yet, but I'm I am envisioning that it is going to happen and I'm really grateful for it. And you know, at the dinner table, we always go around and we talk about the most challenging part of your day, but the best part of your day and um, things that, that um, really stuck out. And that's something where everyone sits and is, is clear and it's not about just shoving food down their face. They are really taking that time to bond with um, within the family. And I really pride that myself on the fact that my kids are very close and they love each other and there's no fighting, very little I should say. And I truly believe it's because we have created this bond where we are all supportive of each other. We take that time to be intentional with our time together. Um, and, it, and, and that's something that is really important to me. So uh, the common theme I heard, and those were all great examples of way of being mindful, are kind of an intentional awareness, whether yeah. it's as you map the day, as you're eating, as you're at a party, intentionally aware of the people that you're with, and if need be, pruning, scaling yeah. back some of those people, and intentionally aware of, mindful of the challenges and, and what those meant to you, as well as the, the joys of the day. Yeah. Excellent. Exactly. All good stuff. Well, we've covered a lot, but I do want to be mindful and intentional <laughs> about our time together. So as we wrap things up, um, do you have any uh, last requests or uh, offers, things you'd like to share with our listeners? Yes. Um, well, number one, for any of your listeners, I would love to, to offer a 15% off um, their first order and with the coupon code PADDOCK15. PADDOCK15 um, at, at what website? At acceleratedhealthproducts.com. And, and that's we'll put that it. in the show notes. Yeah. And then the, the, the request to the listeners is I truly believe that my purpose in life is to help people um, reach their optimal health. And if they could share this with, with those that they think could, could use my help and use um, – some help in the area of diet, nutrition, supplements, and advice. I write a blog every week as well that goes over all of these things like adrenal burnout or what you do for thyroid issues or, or just uh, stories, client stories, testimonials, um, because I really want to help those that want my help, but I don't want to get in the way of the people that don't want to hear from me as well. I love that. That's a great point. And again, accelerated health products, products.com. Go to mindflipping.com for the link to that. And you'll have the code paddock 15 for 15% off. That's a generous offer. Thank you so much okay, for that you. offer. Yeah. And, uh, and for your time today. Well, thank you so much. It's been so much fun talking to you and connecting with like-minded people. And I do want you to know that I love you and I appreciate you, Sarah. Oh, thank you. Likewise. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today. Leave a thumbs up if you've enjoyed this. And please be sure to check the description below for any additional information. Please don't hesitate to leave a comment or ask a question as I'd love to answer as many of those as I possibly can. If there's a particular topic you'd like to hear more about, please share that in the comments below as well. Thanks again for joining us and hope to see you again soon.